Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Combo Box Select One series, part two of two, where I show you how to put Select One in a combo box so the user knows they have to, you know, like select one or something. Or you can put whatever text there you want to. I don't care. If you haven't watched part one, go watch part one first, then come on back. You'll find a link to it down below. All right, so in part one, we made this query right here. We got a union query where we got to select one up top and then we put it in as a combo box option. Now, the problem is we have to check to make sure that the user didn't leave this as select one if they started putting a record in. Right now, with the new there, that means that there's no record here. So as long as I close this, all is good. But as soon as you start putting stuff in a new record, right, then an auto number is assigned. Now you cannot leave because this is gonna generate an error message. I'm gonna hit escape. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the before update event for the form to check to make sure that the user put something other than zero in here. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, design view. Now in my before update event video that I had you watch before part one, that covers the before update event for a field. Okay, there's a before update for the field there's also a before update event for the form itself. So make sure this says form up here and then find before update right there. And the nice thing about before update is that you can verify data here and cancel the event if the data doesn't meet up with your expectations. So dot, 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 that'll bring up my VBA editor. Let me resize this. All right, so in the before update event for the form, I wanna say if, the customer combo, that's the combo box we're working with, equals zero, then they didn't pick a customer. Okay, so we're gonna say cancel equals true. That's gonna cancel the event. If you cancel the before update event, it exits out and doesn't let the customer leave the form or save the record. Okay, that's what cancel equals true is. Yeah, it's an integer. I know you should give it a one or a zero or something like that, but I just use true and false because it makes more sense and it works. It's looking for zero or not zero, basically. All right. And now just tell the user what's going on. So a message box, right? You must select a customer. And if you want to be nice, we can put the focus on that combo box and open it up for them, right? So customer combo dot set focus. That'll move the mouse move the focus, move the cursor on that combo box, and then customer combo dot drop down. That'll open it up. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. Save it, give it a debug compile. All right, let's come back over here. Let's close it, close it, open it, and let's go to a new record. And now I'll come in here and put in some stuff. So I've got a record starting, and I'm gonna try to leave the record. If you click on the sub form, by the way, that's the same as leaving the record. All right, look at that. You must select the customer. Same, hit OK, and it opened it up for you. See, you cannot leave this record now unless you pick somebody. And now I can leave. See, isn't that nice? All right, let's make this guy look different if it's on a new record. Let's make this look gray like our text box ones did, right? Now, unfortunately, the format uh, property is not enough to, to do it here. We're going to use conditional formatting. All right, so let's go right click, design view. I usually assume once we get to the developer level that you guys know what conditional formatting is. If not, go watch this video. So let's click on the combo box, go to format, conditional formatting, new rule. All right, if the field value is equal to zero, I'm gonna set the foreground color equal to, let's go that light gray right there. That looks pretty good, right? All right, hit okay. Hit OK, save it, close it, open it, go to a new record, and oh, look at that. Look at it, it's nice and gray. See? That's pretty cool. Now, the problem is if you drop it down, well, that's, that's still not too bad. This still, still looks like that. Sometimes, let's see, put a record up here. Sometimes, sometimes I've seen it before where this all stays gray. So what you can do is you can also add in another one and maybe, maybe do it if the field has focus, make it yellow. I like that one. You can select this guy, go to format, conditional formatting, new rule, field has focus. We're gonna go background yellow, but not, not that obnoxious yellow. Let's go like a light yellow. 
and then we'll make the foreground color black like that. Okay, now I'm going to move this one up so it takes precedence. Hit OK, save it, close it, open it, and let's go to a new record. Okay, and now when I drop this down, you can see now it's got focus, so it goes yellow and it's easier to read. Right? That's up to you. You can do whatever you want. They're your Legos. <laughs> now, there's a million different ways to do this stuff. This is how I opted to do it with a little union query here. Like I said, you can make a record with a bogus, you know, ID. Just make it. Make a, if you don't feel like going through all this with the union query, just make a record in here. And then you'll just use its ID here and have that one that they can't pick. All right. If, it's, if, if your select one is 33, okay, fine. But mine, you can easily sort it and get it back up top on the list there with the union query. I just like doing it that way. It doesn't require any any extra records in your table. If you like this stuff, if you like learning with me, I got lots and lots of developer lessons on my website. Members get a free class every month at your membership level, so check it out. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to post them down below. Now, this is just my way of tackling this. This is how I would go about it. I can think of two or three other ways to do it. How would you do it? How would you tackle this problem? You got any other ideas that I didn't think about? Post them down below in the comments. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, 
be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.